Another week, another edition of uh, Tech Plus. Hello and welcome. It's Jan with you as well as Kane, and uh, we're about to uh, unpack this week's biggest tech stories. Joining us in studio, as always, is our special guest, Kane. Kane, man, how's it going? It's going good. You got shades on today. At first, I thought maybe he was hungover or, <laughs> or something else, but uh, he's got it for a reason. And yeah, he's going to tell us now. Today, I'm wearing the Meta Ray-Bans Wayfarers. I think that's what they're they're called. They're the newest uh, glasses in Meta's lineup for, you know, these glasses that have cameras in it, mics in it. Basically, it's like a smartwatch, but a pair of glasses. Yeah, and I've, I was actually thoroughly surprised by it. You know, I was I was lucky enough to get my hands on it, um, and it has two cameras on it: one in the left and one in the right eye. And uh, it has one button to turn the device on and one button to basically capture. And you can just kind of whenever you want, you can use voice commands to start capturing video. So let's say, you know, you're you're in a tight squeeze, you've got some stuff in your hands, but there's just absolutely something crazy going on. Maybe, you know, this bird that you've been looking for, for, mm. you know, ever in your bird watcher suddenly is in front of you, but your hands are full. You can activate a voice command and just take a photo or start a video recording. And I think one of the most interesting things about it is I, I actually ended up getting it at the end of the day and it was on my birthday that I got it. So at the beginning of the day, I thought to myself, I thought back at the end of the day, and I thought, sure, you know, if I had put these on at the beginning of the day, I would have been able to take snapshots of oh. while I was opening certain gifts. Oh, and, but you didn't, and you didn't the, receive it first. No, but you know, it's, it's, it's a... <laughs> It's, a, it's an interesting yeah. thing because what we're used to is being able to whip out your phone and take a video. And most of the time we might take a video with a selfie. Yeah. We might, um, you know, we might t- make a point and shoot video, but, you know, the angle you're holding it and things like that. Whereas mm. with the, the Ray-Ban glasses, when you start recording, you're literally capturing a video of what you saw. What you're seeing, yeah. It's because it's from your eyes. It's a direct... From that that angle. It's directly the same thing. You yeah. Know? And Listen... You, First of all, happy birthday for, for this week. I uh, hope you had a very, very nice day. Thank you. It was a great day, actually. Yeah, and we- uh, closer to 30 now. <laughs> <laughs> One step little closer. Bit. You know. Yeah, and then obviously you got these awesome glasses for your birthday, which is a very nice gift. So hell of a gift day eh? one of the it, it is as far as i understand and i might be wrong but it was it's one of the only available in south africa right now as far as i understood when i opened it up i couldn't even get the app running i had to do wow. some special you know Could macgyvering it? of your android's yeah. you know <laughs> play store account to get it in a different country where the app where the meta view app is available but i must tell the listeners kane was acting very funny when he arrived here today <laughs> i was wondering why he's not you know taking off the glasses so later on i thought okay maybe he's showing off the glasses so it's like oh okay cool shade bro and he kept it on and he kept talking you know and repeating himself and i thought wow he's very different today <laughs> man's lost it <laughs> maybe he's lost it or he's overworked or something but now i know you've been secretly recording as well so um, I, I did it actually yeah. as a thought experiment because I wanted to be like, you know, if someone was just in your nearest vicinity that you know or you might be associated with that was using his glasses, how easy would it be to determine whether or not the person is engaging with you or not? And my answer is it's incredibly difficult to discern. Mm. You know, if I'm standing in a line and I just say, you know, hey, Meta, take a photo, it will go out and oh, it'll there actually, it goes. it'll take a photo. <laughs> And, it's listening, you know, and uh, that's it's just. It's I think it's a really cool way, especially if you're in a, a situation. You know, maybe you're driving around and someone bumps you, and it's just you need to record this situation for you know. Everybody always is like, "Damn, I wish I could have just recorded." Yeah, what it's almost there. like a, a dash cam. Yeah, it's like for a your dash eyes. cam, but for your yeah. you're the dash. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, know. but like uh, imagine somebody says something to you in the shop or, you know, becomes violent and you're like, uh, bro, just what did you say to me? Just say it again. And then Meta record. <laughs> so when I first heard about it, I thought, okay, are these just glasses that have a camera on? But I've learned that they're actually much more than that. They're, uh, they've also got um, speakers that are... Yes. that run behind your ear. You know how you would normally wear glasses? So it's not over your ear. There's no earphone, but it can play music arguably clearer 
Yeah. Than headphones. It's like surround earphones. sound because you you had me testing it just now, and it sounds like surround sound. The music's around your head. It plays like in, onto your skull almost. It is in very a way. yeah, but it's very subtle. And, and you know, I, when you look at the glasses, you can't say that they've got cameras or anything. No. There's no way of telling. If you take a close up look and you look through the the frame of the glass, you'll actually see all these computer components. Wow. Throughout the period. It feels of like I walked into a futuristic movie or something. It is man. a bit like that. I'm telling yeah, you. Because we, we always talk about it, you know, but we never physically see it. I think if you're standing area. in a line and you just shoot off hey man to start recording or hey man to do this or do that you know, people are going to answer you like, you were even like Meta, isn't it? Like <laughs> Google or something? <laughs> like, no, no, I'm not talking to you. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I was wondering who you were talking to, and now I know. It all makes sense. So it's linked to your phone and everything. So you can take calls. It's also got like a touchpad on the side of it. So if you tap it Crazy. once, you can play music. It's like linked to your Spotify. If you, if you, you know, kind of swipe the touchpad towards your eye, you'll turn the volume up. If you swipe it towards your ear, you'll turn the volume down. What? There's like double finger gestures and things like that. And the really cool thing is apparently Meta is going to be bringing a lot of updates to the Ray-Bans um, over the, over for this particular model for AI-related assistance stuff. So I can imagine that, you know, for example, Meta is one of the, the people that actually released the real-time Google, uh, well, the real-time translation AI, where you can voice record in and you'll get a voice recording back of you speaking another language, right? That they built that. So I imagine that these glasses are going to be the framework for having some of that technology mm. where someone can speak to you in a language you don't know. You can say, you know, hey, Meta, please translate this. And boom, you know, you get you get it directly into your ear. No one else can really hear about it. And you get it directly fed into your ear in their voice, what they're actually saying in the, in the corresponding language. That's crazy. Now my mind's wandering. Yes. So I'm wondering... Let's say somebody grabs those glasses off your head now and he runs away with it. Yeah. How far can he go until the reception to your phone stops working? Is, is it connected via Bluetooth? And, and how far before it disconnects and, and he, he's got the glasses there? So I think the, the, it has Bluetooth uh, and Wi-Fi 6. So it's okay. going to last as far as those Signals. bands will. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you're going to get probably like... 15, 20 meters. Yeah. And, and if so you got to catch him before area, then. Yeah. You better start wheeling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you start moving fast. Okay, awesome. But also, one might realize that grabbing a, f- a pair of glasses off someone's face is easier said than done compared yeah. to grabbing a phone out of their hand. Yeah, no, I, I've never seen anybody unless steal they come behind you. <laughs> unless, they, unless they come behind you, maybe, and just whip it off or something. Yeah, and that's usually when you, when you put it down. Yeah. That's when they take it. Yeah, when you're not when you're not looking. Yeah, but I've never seen it off, stolen off somebody's face. Well, not yet. You know those <laughs> those phone cases that people use with their it's like a leather flap almost, it's like a yes. leather pouch almost. That's they right. Put the glasses yeah. in. So this one for the Ray Bans has obviously a Bluetooth uh, 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 battery in it. So when oh. you put your glasses into the pouch, it, it starts charging it like get a get out like of town. Earphones, like and AirPods. just last week, you told us about that very intelligent vacuum cleaner of yours who takes himself back to the charging port. <laughs> After he uh, he did the job around the house, yeah. so now you've got somebody or a machine doing your vacuuming, and now you've got this as well. So now you're really high tech, eh? Getting smart home day. Yes, it's amazing, hey. But I mean, uh, it's true to what you're doing as a presenter for Tech Plus. You've got to have some gotta technology, test it out, you know, some gadgets at least, you know. You've got to test it out. And, to, and, and speaking of things that we've that we've got to test out. Um, we've got a, a update in the um, in Starlink, right? Remember we heard about how Starlink people in South Africa were getting Starlink, like something like fourteen thousand people in South Africa have Starlink, even though it's not allowed in South Africa. Mm-hmm. South African businesses registered themselves in other countries near neighboring South Africa and basically imported the products in, and they found loopholes upon loopholes. So apparently Starlink's blocking of accounts that led to hundreds of customers in South Africa losing internet access was li- likely due to a company reselling the SpaceX offering against its terms of service. That is according to patent attorney Vessel van Veek of the patent copyright and trademark law firm Smith & Van Veek. Several Starlink users in South Africa who received their kits from Mozambique-based importer StarSat Africa began complaining about their services being offline in early February 2024. 
StarSat subsequently confirmed to my broadband that the cutoff impacted 350 to 400 of its customers. It said that made up around 10% of its total customer base. The company offers an import service to various sub-Saharan African countries, including South Africa, and a management service that handles account sign-up and payments to Starlink. For the latter, it charges a 1,200 monthly fee and uh, has around, uh, compared to a rough uh, 700 to 900 a customer would pay when paying Starlink directly um, for the subscription. So they take a little bit of a cut, but uh, it looks like that was short-lived as uh, Starlink begins to take action against people who haven't gone through the right gray areas <laughs> to to sub-provide the service to South Africans. And I still think, let's just get Starlink. I mean, look, I think that I always like to ask myself, is the damage it can do, you know, worse than the good it can do? Mm. And if I look at something like AI video for something like Sora, we spoke about it last week, the ability to one for one recreate yeah. any video footage. The Pretty one scary. thing, you know, if someone sends you a picture and says, look, you know, my, my wall has a hole in it and you are the homeowner, you'll, you know, you'll be like, wow, I, I might not believe you, you know. But if someone says, hey, here's a video of the hole in your wall, you're going to be like, I fully believe you. Just yeah. the same that if um, if if you got a call from someone that sounded like a family member, you might be inclined to believe them if they're looking for money. But mm. if you get a video call from one of your family members, <laughs> you best believe you're going to have a hard time. If it's, if it's indistinguishable, you're going to have a really hard time knowing if you're getting scammed or not. And you sure. don't know the severity of it, you know. So that for me can do more damage right now than good ai video yeah, right now definitely the, the good it can do save people some money the bad it can do is like devastating and voice cloning and and i'm also thinking in terms of um uh, voiceover artists you know who have to do voiceovers for their work but their voices can actually just be cloned and uh, read any uh, script they just need a like a 60 second sample of your voice well yes that's actually something that i was i was telling someone the other day um i was saying that you know if you if you look at an artist if we just look at the music industry and ai you're gonna have three i believe three types of artists the first type of artist let's say it's eminem you know just for the sake of giving a a, a name to a face if eminem is going to make music he and and ai models are going to duplicate his music without his permission he might be inclined to be very upset about this and very unhappy that he's missing out on all this money, right? And and that people are basically stealing his identity and, and producing his music off of it. He no longer has the ability to be creative. He might be debilitated by that idea and be very upset and try to take charge and, and go legal. Whereas let's say someone like Drake, again, just an example, he's got no problem with AI generative models. He realizes mm. that if he uses AI to create the songs beforehand, he can save a lot of money creating a lot of songs that he wouldn't end up using, right? Okay. So he brings it into his creator funnel. He has AI models that are trained off of his own music and his own inf in input, and he can use these models however he wants, and he can get songs paired up, and he can test out different tracks and lines and all sorts of different styles and genres, and he doesn't even have to actually put in the effort yet until he's got something he likes and he produces it originally and then you've got another guy let's say we don't know who he is he doesn't exist yet he doesn't really care about his intellectual property he has no care in the world whether people buy his music or not you know or whether maybe not whether they buy their music but whether or not people have the ability to make music with his voice so he decides to make an ai model that anyone in the world can use to basically produce music. So if you have no music capabilities, you can't sing, you can't write music, you can play around with his text to music prompt mm. that's trained off of his own voice and his own backtrack, and you can make a song. And maybe he says, if you make a song, you can put it on my Spotify, and if it does well, you can make 30% commissions. Yeah. Now he has hundreds of thousands of people all pushing different types of his music. It would be physically impossible for him to even use his own AI models to produce that volume of music. Mm. Drake and that guy are fine. Eminem, you're not going to win. You're not going to win the battle. You're not going to win the legal fight because it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. So we're kind of at that point where you're like, well, how do we better embrace it now? If we are going to have AI video, how do we stop it from disarming people or you know, f phishing scams, um, false identity you know, scams? Man, the list goes on of the damage it can do. But for me, we're circling back to Starlink. Starlink in South Africa, how much damage can it do? It can cost ISP some money. What good can it do? It can connect the unconnected. 
It can allow someone who's in a region that has no connectivity to not only get connected to the internet, but also sell that internet connectivity to people around him. So when you have a way to connect people that are disconnected and allow them to make money off of allowing other people to connect through them, you can actually create an economy. So is it a bad, if, if everybody in a per place that wasn't connected could run Starlink and make some money off of making other, helping other people get connected, that's for me really a lot of good. I don't see a lot of bad in that, to yeah. be honest. That getting the whole of South Africa connected in every region yeah. as an internet. Internet access does a lot more things than just, you know, helping us make money. Internet connectivity can be the difference between you getting an SOS out or not. You know, mm. Internet connectivity can be the difference between you having access to a legal entity or not. How so? Well, ChatGBT can help you with legal stuff. Yeah. So if you can connect to the internet and you can use ChatGBT for completely for free, and it can help you with legal advice. You might just save yourself, a, you know, a little bit of trouble. Internet connectivity. So, Kane, sorry, in the yes. last 60 seconds, did you hear birds? I did. Hardy dogs. Hardy dogs. Yeah, okay, now I'm just checking. I thought it was finally losing it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good sign. Because like it sounds hardy very dogs. real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you start hearing hardy dogs that aren't there, you should definitely <laughs> consider something. Yeah, you, you go, always got to <laughs> double check. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, is it time for a music break? Absolutely, let's go. Welcome back to uh, Tech Plus, uh, another edition for uh, another week. And uh, it's Jan and Kane with you. We're talking about the week's biggest, biggest uh, tech stories, uh, not just in South Africa, but uh, the world. So we like hearing from you. Last week we shared uh, the WhatsApp line and uh, we're encouraging our listeners, if you listen to us every week, uh, same time, same place to send us a, a WhatsApp message. Let us know uh, what you think of what we're talking about. Um, nice, friendly messages, positive messages. Um, very, very welcome. And uh, one of the uh, messages we got was from uh, a listener uh, called Ed who wanted to know more about, uh, uh, since we're talking about AI, uh, more about home security and how AI can help us in that field yeah. Kane obviously did some homework during the week and he's got uh, some feedback for us eh? uh, Kane? yes absolutely first of all I think it was a great question because I don't think it's something a lot of people have, uh, have been asking mm. because just judging by the amount of information available online it doesn't seem to be something that's being asked a hell of a lot but yeah. interestingly enough it has some there is some unprecedented application for artificial intelligence in the home security system world um, and there's a few ways that we can look at that i think a lot of what's made security systems better today is actually artificial like features anyway artificial intelligence like features anyway being able to detect a human being i've got a, a a camera like that really it can track yeah so it knows it w whether it's a, a a cat in the backyard or oh, a, a wow. human being yeah yes. but the problem is now that the thieves uh, over December were crawling on the floor like cats yes. uh, to to confuse the cameras, and uh, that concerns me because they're obviously aware that these cameras have human detection. Anyway, we, so yeah. I think when you're looking at human detection like that, you probably have some degree of frame by frame an analysis, where every single frame, and I think even with AI, it would be doing the same. But in this case, it's comparing every frame to something that isn't built on artificial intelligence. Not every single one of them is built off of AI to detect humans. It's got other pr methods of programming and other methods of like tracking, for example, sending like a, a, an infrared light to the object and back. If it doesn't come back, you know, if it does that every tenth of a second and it, the data coming back is a bit different, there's going to be something there. So it's going to maybe just turn on and the most simple of object detection. But with AI, it allows us to actually train um, not just frame by frame analysis, but also all the frames together analysis in the most simple of description. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you, like you said, if if it knows a person because it can see what a person looks like standing up, AI might be able to determine what a person looks like lying down, mm, right, mm. based on what they look like standing up. So if there yeah. is some very odd things happening on the corner of a, of a film, AI might be able to differentiate it just being light refraction, so like random light 
bouncing off maybe people are walking in the distance past the source of the light and there's just a little bit of like shimmer and things like that that's happening or it can discern okay this is actually a person crawling and 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 that for example can be one of the ways that that ai is going to improve the home security system world also things like greater visibility um we've often seen if you want to train a cool ai model and we take the the blurred um background foreground example if you want to train an ai model you can go and you can take a picture of anything on a table and in one of the shots focus on the table and in another shot focus on the object on the table and now you have a way to tell ai what what a table looks like blurred and what a table looks like normal and Mm -hmm. what your foreground object looks like blurred and what a foreground object looks like normal and if you train it right the ai will be able to unblur any background or unblur any foreground and that's some way that you can train it so if you are constantly training ai on for example being able to understand what's going on on the furthest edge of a camera mm. it can use predictive generative to to show what's out of the frame wow in real time for every frame so it can actually see more not necessarily because it can see more but because it can predict mm. what is mm. on the outside of it and it might be able to just see the fraction of something in the frame to be able to determine that this is not right this is not a yeah. correct um thing and then it can actually alert that there's something odd happening also tracking and things like that as well um if if you train ai on how to track something for a long period of time it's going to get better and better and better Mm -hmm. and better at tracking it and also ignoring other things like cats and dogs and mouses and bats and it'll have a greater degree of accuracy of differentiating those things yeah you know when you're talking about whenever we talk about ai it would seem to me that with all ai there is a period in the beginning where you need to allow it to to train first and learn and and uh you know sort of get to know you and save the patterns you know yes before it works the the best ai would be able to do something like learn who you are in your own house so if you're walking through the house at 2 a.m. in the morning, no problem. Mm. If someone well, no, has never you. seen before is walking <clears throat> through the house, it's a problem. Oh, well, what if you're not wearing makeup? It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Because some people uh, are unrecognizable without makeup. So you've got to show AI first what you look like without makeup. Otherwise, it's going to get a fright at 2 a.m. A, that's actually an absolutely <laughs> great example. And I'll tell yeah. you because it goes back to that blurred camera thing. Yeah. If I can show a photo of a person with makeup and a person without makeup, I can train AI for what a person looks like without makeup or ah. what a person is going to look like with makeup. Mm-hmm. And if you take that model and you apply it in the home security world, it will be able to tell if you're wearing makeup or not. It will know because it can look both at you with makeup and okay. predict you without it and see if Damn, it matches. It's, clever. it's crazy clever. It's clever. But I mean, you know what re- would be really cool is if you could get that vacuum cleaner of yours to be like a pet dog, like a guard dog. <laughs> get excited. <laughs> and uh, sort of uh, like have an attack mode and go all start crazy hitting, spraying bunk. water at the robber you know? <laughs> yeah or just bump into his knees or something <laughs> sprays him in the eyes with salty water <laughs> so get out get out <laughs> <laughs> so in a nutshell ai for home security getting way way there's a lot of little things that are lining up to make it extremely extremely useful like a lot of disconnected things mm. um for example even if you look at voice uh, uh, audio translators if people are speaking in a foreign language, we are building AI models that are able to unscramble whatever language that is and, and, sure. and interpret it. So then again, if people are walking around your house and they're speaking a language that, you know, AI might actually be able to one, listen, two, understand, and three, make an informed decision as what to do next. And uh, that's going to come. So right now, there's not like a, a product you can buy or something like that that's just absolutely focused in the AI home security world by using these models to get better. But we're like we're a few months away from what is going to be probably one of some of the best security systems when we implement yeah. this kind of technology. So yeah, but in the end, it's for the better. It's, it's and, for the and better. And and it will keep us safe. You know, as I always say, what could possibly go wrong? Go wrong. Go wrong. <laughs> I like that. That's so funny. Speaking of going wrong, Netflix password crackdown. You noticed? 
Uh, yes, Did that's why I had to get my own. <laughs> okay. Now, you know what blew my mind? We we were speaking about password cracked on this and password cracked on that, and it hadn't happened yet, and we were kind of skeptical whether it would come or not. But we even spoke, and I had some assurity in the fact that I knew that if even if the password were to the cross crackdown were to happen it's okay just buy an extra member on your netflix account mm. that was what was you were supposed to be able to happen yeah not in south africa not yet. Yeah. no Mm-mm. here in south africa you're not allowed to have two households connected and you're just not allowed to sorry yeah. this, that's the end of the conversation really we're bad. having right now you know you that's have really to go bad. create another account <laughs> or they've they've kind of picked the annoying route they're like mm. we, we will we won't we won't punish them we'll annoy them to death with that you know? uh, pop-up. So you get a pop-up. Yeah. You have to email verify. It's a whole process. And uh, By the end of that process, you don't really feel like watching TV no, anymore. By the end of that process, you're prepared to refilm whatever show you like <laughs> watching. And just live and watch in your own time. <laughs> you know? So that's what I feel at least. Yeah, no, you're right. Absolutely. So Netflix has apparently come out to explain why cheaper extra member features are not available in South Africa. And I, I read this and I was like, I want to find out. And I want to find out, you know, live on air. So Netflix has explained the reasoning behind South African subscribers not getting the option to add discounted extra members to accounts. After years of not caring all that much about subscribers sharing their passwords with people outside their households, even joking about it in social media posts, Netflix started clamping down in 2022. And uh, in March 2022, analysis Mason estimated that the company had lost roughly 1.8 billion in revenue in its European, Middle Eastern and African markets due to the crackdown. The company began using a combination of elements including IP addresses, network information, device IDs and user viewing habits to establish a primary location where the account holder was most likely to be accessing the service. If it detects that a device away from its location is accessing the service, it sends a notification warning users not to do it. If the user had access to the email account used for the subscription, they could change it via their, they could change the primary location basically by email. And it was initially limited to just a handful of countries in South America. However, it hit us now most recently in the last few months. So of the 190 countries where Netflix is available, apparently roughly 100 got the ability to add an extra member under a sub account at a fraction of the cost. The secondary user gets their own profile and separate streaming service instance in another location than what Netflix has determined to be the primary address. The feature served to soften the impact of subscribers. But however, when South Africa got hit with the crackdown, that didn't happen. They weren't included in the 100 companies. However, Netflix did start cracking down on password sharing only just the beginning of this year. So it might still be coming. And uh, whether Netflix had to consider whether the pricing model in the market would benefit from inducing a lower cost option. And they ultimately deduced that uh, because Netflix is already cheaper in South Africa because of the exchange difference, like in America, if you buy your Netflix subscription with USD, with them dollars, you can actually spend more than you would in South Africa. And we see the same with Xbox Game Pass. So South Africa is already on a tier that is at a discounted rate in Netflix's eyes. Right? In their mind, South Africa already gets lower rates because the amount that they collect after they convert it is much less than what they collect from an American. And so that's the reason. We just have it too cheap, apparently, to be subjected to a cheaper third secondary account option. So whatever you thought. And I don't really like that because you've got profiles on the Netflix account. Like people yeah, are watching, they've exactly. formed habits. It's like that Showmax thing where people lost yeah, their new history. I, I was just thinking about it. Uh, but I think uh, so far no solutions uh, to that problem. But listen, I don't know if you heard uh, this week uh, in the news that your friends uh, at Take a Lot um, they actually uh, took um, on a new uh, distribution warehouse in Durban, six billion rand. Whoa! So uh, they ramping up. I guess it has something to do with um, with Amazon's. Arrival that's so, imminent. Amazon's visit, should we call yes. it a conjugal visit? Yes. So they they're obviously ramping up a bit, eh? Uh, I mean, the timing is quite interesting, don't you think? You know what it reminds me of? As soon as you said it, I thought of it, and then I realised that's actually quite hilarious. Is do you remember when? Do you remember a time where Pepsi and Coke were quite predominant in South Africa? Mm. Not anymore. Mm-mm, just Mm-mm. Coca-Cola. Mm-mm. It's just Coke. Do you know how that happened? What happened to Pepsi? This was what was told to me, because I'm, I'm not the expert on it, but I, I have heard some things. You still see Pepsi. You still but see not, Pepsi. But not in all the stores, though. 
So I think a number of years ago, um, Coca-Cola started buying out all the refrigeration systems in South Africa, all the refrigeration warehousing <laughs> for like cold drinks. <laughs> and uh, that kind of Pepsi had nowhere to keep their Cokes. <laughs> I mean, Pepsi had nowhere to keep their Pepsis. <laughs> There's just no way to keep them cold. But difficult to sell a cold Pepsi warm. Jeez, what a spiteful move, eh? And you're like, yeah, like no. Like, you can't put your cool drink anywhere because we've got all the fridges. Like you, could keep, you could put the cool drink somewhere, <laughs> but they're not going to stay cold. And then Fred, sure. Coke also started giving shops, like uh, like spa. It was branded. It ah. gave them fridges for free. And obviously you can't put Pepsi don't in it. Don't you dare put a Pepsi no, in it. But you thing. can't. It no, just won't so look right. Don't put a, No, don't put a Pepsi in there. Don't put anything. Everything <laughs> that's in a Coke fridge is a product of Coca-Cola. This company. is why we always find the Pepsi in these small fridges. <laughs> the way basics ex- of the ice cream. That's it. These <laughs> extra fridges. Like, maybe that's their little little comeback, you know. Like, small fridges just for us. Always wondered why I always Shame have to go fetch my Pepsis from the frozen aisle. <laughs> do, do you prefer Pepsi? Or do you, are you also a Coke guy? Pepsi is really sweet, eh? And you Pepsi know, is different, definitely. I li- I it's, like, it's sweeter. I though. like Coke. I like Pepsi. Pepsi is very sweet. Some people like Pepsi. Coke's also very sweet. It's just what taste you prefer. But in reality, the other day I was comparing a, a Coca-Cola and a Steri Stumpy. Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> they both have the same amount of sugar. Wow. And I was like, so would I rather have a Coke or a Steri Stumpy? And I was like, well... At least with the Steri Stumpy, I'm getting like 11 grams of protein. Yeah, yeah. What other thing other than sugar am I getting from the Coke? Yeah, just a good scrub in your tummy. <laughs> <laughs> what else? You can't, you can't find any other nutritional value in that Coke. No, definitely not. There isn't not. even any nutritional value just to a, begin a with. a quick uh, burst of sugar going so, through your some body. Some sugar and some water. At least with yeah. the, 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 the Steri Stumpy doesn't hide. It's sugar milk but at least with the milk you're getting protein and calcium yeah and like, no that's definitely a healthier choice but i mean also with um stereo stumpy you don't get that tingling feeling in your in your throat when you it's not carbonated that first, no that first lovely sip of coca-cola on a warm oh oh that's it yeah. you do it so well yeah yeah that's oh man i, I, I would really that. like a coke right now yeah you know when it just opens like <laughs> and you just know it's just that <laughs> sound you just hear that fizz <laughs> Yes, and then that and that tingle at the back of your throat. They did a great job marketing us as children, eh? Yeah, we can still hear it in the back of our minds. (laughs) (laughs) It echoes in my head. Didn't they used to go like brr or something like that? Okay, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, as kids, we saw that and still in our minds. It just shows you those were really good advertising campaigns. So here's okay. I guess we have a music break now, eh? That's right. Yeah, let's go have a coke. Yes. To have a, let's have a break. Let's have a Kit Kat. <laughs> no, we're having a Coke now. We should just transition to ads like that, you know. <laughs> just a, anywhere, anytime, penny pinch. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for our final stretch for uh, this week's edition of uh, Tech Plus. We're heading towards the end of February, believe it or not. Okay, uh, what have you got for us next? Whoa, AI, let's talk about it. Never really, we're always talking about AI, I guess, but this time we're not talking directly about AI, we're talking about a creator of AI. So Sam Altman, the owner of OpenAI, one of the founders of OpenAI, despite, I'm sure you didn't know this, but he actually owns a big chunk of Reddit. As no, well. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So a fun fact from Reddit's IPO filing, because I didn't know if you know this, but this is also pretty cool. Reddit is going to go for another public offering. Mm. And guess who they're offering shares to? Oh, please don't tell me it's Elon Musk. No, even better. Uh, Zuckerberg? No, even better. Um, it's going to be all of the most active users of Reddit. Oh, okay. Okay, wow. Oh, That's a, that. quite a twist. Okay. So imagine you're an everyday Facebook user and you just have meta contact you and they're like, listen, we see you use, you use Facebook every day. Would you like to buy some Facebook shares? Yeah. But let's say sure. Facebook shares aren't just natively shared online. So mm. it is actually quite a really cool initiative. I it think. is. Very good. Get people back in control of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, in, you know, with Reddit filing for this IPO, Sam Altman has been revealed that he is uh, one of the um, one of the three largest shareholders, and uh, that's alongside Advanced Publication, which owns Condé Nast and Tencent and Altman. So literally, Tencent, um, Advanced Publications, and Altman are the three largest shareholders. 
So the OpenAI CEO owns 8.7% owns of the stock versus Huffman's 3.3%. And while he isn't a co-founder, Altman has been deeply involved in Reddit since basically the beginning. He quietly stepped off the board in 2022 as OpenAI was rising to prominence and Reddit was gearing up to go public. Now he owns a big chunk of a company that really wants AI companies to pay for his data. Interesting times. So Altman is now is basically a large shareholder in another company that feels that... Um, you know, that feels very strongly that AI companies need to pay for the data they train their models on. So it's quite interesting that he's both the company that is not really paying people for the data they're training AI on and also representing a company that feels it's important to make sure that people mm. get paid for the data they train AI on. So <laughs> there's a little bit of contradiction for your, for your, for your, for your Saturday. Um, and then another thing is, um, remember that we heard about Universal? Yes. And TikTok. What happened there? Is it fixed now? I don't know, but we've got big news here. Why are we whispering? We've got big news here. If they, if Universal still isn't a part of TikTok, right? TikTok has just announced that um, more than 160 new countries will be able to add music they find on TikTok to their streaming platform of choice. TikTok, TikTok announced today that the mm. app, the Add to Music app feature launched in the US in November, is integrating platforms like Spotify and Apple Music into the video app. Music discovery is huge on TikTok, but the relationship between labels and the tech company are tenuous. So really, this is so cool because now what you can do is when you hear a popular song on TikTok, you can just open it in Spotify. Nice. That's a very good idea. But now imagine being a universal artist. And I can't everybody's believe this. finding everybody's music on Spotify, but none of your brands or your artists' music is on TikTok literally open for the taking millions and millions of hours watched every single day going to everybody that isn't a universal artist and all of them being able to easily get to spotify and listen to their favorite music and it's a big factor to consider hey and it's a little bit of a it's a bad move from universal i mean this is this is just talking like i've always wanted to be like can't i just open the song in spotify why do i always have to go through the creators link tree and find mm. his music and go through the maze of things. Exactly, yeah. So to see that there is like, yo, I wonder how but I just was feeling about that. It blows my mind that this issue that's been going on for weeks now between Universal and TikTok hasn't been solved yet. Yeah. I mean, like, really, like, they didn't even try, unless we don't know about it, but they didn't even try to go back to, to the boardroom and kind of sort it out somehow. Not good. No. It's absolutely not good. You know what also isn't good? A vast internet security. Do you Jeez, know it's- when last did you see a vast on a computer? Jeez, I saw that it. little uh, orange icon. Yeah, and that yeah. A. You know, that's what I mean? it. You'll yeah. know it when you see it. You know? I think that was the one I always had on my computer because the other ones were like so bloated with um, pop-ups and trying to sell me stuff and trying to sneakily install other software in the background. You know, like would you like to see a little the picture most- of a cat and then when you click on it, then it just installs like two other programs on your computer it was always funny to me because you would download an app and it would seem to want to install an antivirus as part yeah. of this app you know? yeah there's always uh, obviously a bit of a deal that they've got going there for every installation you know we'll give you a bit of money if you put our thing there but anyway what do you want to say about Avast so Avast has been fined 16.5 million dollars for privacy software that actually sold users browsing data so again sneakily installing stuff on other people's computer instead of protecting it so in this case the software company is facing 16.5 million in fines after it was caught storing and selling customer information without their consent the ftc or federal trade commission announced that the fine on thursday um, announced the fine on thursday and said that it's banning of a vast from selling user data for advertising purposes so from 2014 at least to 2020 a vast harvested user web browsing information through its antivirus software and browser extension and then subsequently went on to sell that um, to over 100 third parties without the the knowledge of the customers and the service itself was claimed to keeping you safe keeping you secure and keeping your browsing private <laughs> An anti-security thing, oh, it's just the, the irony of it is like, okay, how many people really do care about your data? Maybe you shouldn't just trust everything on face value and you should protect your data because everybody says everybody's selling data. But when you hear about stuff like this, you're like, wow, everybody really is trying to go whatever means necessary to collect data and sell it. We trusted you, Avast. 
Come on. We trusted you, little orange bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Man, oh man. In other news about AI, the Justice Department gets a chief AI officer. That's a new role. Yeah, you see. Imagine you went back five years and you heard that the the United States Justice Department has has appointed an AI officer as it figures out how AI impacts law enforcement. So we were talking about AI security systems. Now we're talking about how AI impacts law enforcement. And I think we're going to see, you know, we're going to see a lot of movement there as well. Then in other news, League of Legends, if anybody knows it, is an MMO, uh, massive multiplayer online game. I think you play 5v5s. It's quite popular. It was popularized quite a long time ago. There's like a lot of players from a long time ago. They're releasing a new game, a fighting game called T uh, 2XKO. And uh, anybody that's a League of Legends fan will find that pretty interesting and probably want to check it out. Um, And in other news as well, Sony, I'm so happy to hear about this. Sony is now testing PSVR 2 support for PC. So if anybody out there was ever an owner of a PS5, I'm sure there is a few of you, that are thinking about getting the the PlayStation VR headset, nothing has been announced yet or officially confirmed as of right now. But what might deter you from getting a PS5 VR headset is the fact that there's all these other VR headsets, the Apple Vision Pro, the MetaQuest 3, the HTC Vibe 2.0, and there's just all these headsets. Why would I want to go buy one that I can only use on my PlayStation? Mm-hmm. So Sony coming out saying that, in fact, it looks like um, it's working on allowing PS VR 2 owners to connect their headset to PC gaming rigs. We're pleased to share, they say, that we are currently testing the ability for PSVR 2 players to access additional games on PC to offer even more game variety in addition to the PSVR 2 titles available throughout the PS5. They said they hope to make the support available in 2024, so stay tuned for more updates. Up until now, Sony had been dodging questions about the PSVR 2 headset and... uh, I'm glad to see them taking taking some initiative to make that happen. We need more of that. I mean, they're so outnumbered right now with Xbox. Because Xbox, I mean, you buy a game on Xbox, you can play it on PC. Yeah. When you get an Xbox Game Pass subscription, any of those games you can play on PC or Xbox. And then here comes PlayStation, same cost. More expensive, actually. I think Xbox Game Pass is 90 Rand a month or 70 Rand mm. a month. And PlayStation, the deluxe edition, is like 200 Rand a month. You know? Big you know, difference. You know what I discovered the other night? What? Now being back on Netflix, um, having the app on my phone, Netflix, you've got games on your phone now. <laughs> and it's free. Wow, that's true, actually. Yeah, because remember, we always spoke about it, but I didn't know, you know, like how many would there be. And they were, there's so many of them. Wow. Many games you can play, and it's free. All it does is when you click on it inside um, uh, Netflix, it takes you to the App Store to install the game. But it's been uploaded by Netflix, so it's free of charge. So if you want to play games, you can do so for free uh, with your Netflix subscription on your cell phone. Wow. It's cute games, you know, like little... Little fun games, why not? Little fun games, you know, little uh, virtual realities, that kind of stuff. You know, like... You know what I'm talking about. I don't know know what you're called now, like... Those games where you control the people. and We called it like, we would call it like mini games, or like web games. You know? mm, mm. Like little. But for free. Okay. No games. hidden costs. Oh, other than your Netflix subscription. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite nice. It's a nice add on. Have you played some of the games properly? No. A little bit. Just one of them. And you I like can't it? even remember the name, but it's yeah. Like Tetris I like and it. that sort and no, of stuff. Yeah. Okay. But no, no ads in between or anything. Exactly. So that's quite, quite nice. That is very nice. Speaking of things that are very nice, this is actually very nice for, you know, mankind. Um, Intuitive Machines has just made history by becoming the first private aerospace company to land a spacecraft on the moon's surface. Wow, that's really, really cool. Well, so f- that happened this week, eh? Yes. So following its launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket last Thursday, the robotic Nova Sea Odysseys lander built by In- Intuitive Machines has now touched down, also making it the first U.S. spacecraft to successfully land on the moon since 1972, Apollo 17's mission. 1972. Think about that. The first U.S. spacecraft to successfully land on the moon since 1972. It was expected to land at about 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time, and now Mission Control confirmed it's on the moon and transmitting. 
Described by NASA as a hexagonal cylinder on six legs, the novice Odysseus lander is carrying several science and research payloads for the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLS, I mean CLPS program, which aims to collect information data about the moon's surface. It aimed for a lunar south pole, a region of particular scientific interest due to the occurrence of water ice hiding in permanently shadowed craters. Such data could prove useful before NASA's Artemis program brings people back to the moon in 2025, guys. We're a year away from putting people back on the moon. Isn't that exciting? Hey, it's just around the corner. Just around the corner. How are we going, corner. Kane? Just around the corner. You know, there was an, actually another thing that I read um, where people were talking about the moon and it kind of rusting. Now, apparently there's a type of uh, mineral that's forming on the moon or at least a byproduct or of some sort of rusting type you know chemical reaction i'm not too sure on the exact specifics but due to the due to this this phenomenon there's this chemical that's present i think it's called hematite or something like that and it only forms when in the presence of oxygen and water hmm. so to be seeing it forming on the moon isn't that a bit strange yeah. you see a chemical that is only really pre- present um you know where there's oxygen and water kind of appearing on the moon it kind of leads you to believe, well, there must be some sort of water and oxygen potentially on the moon. And I mm. think that's where we're seeing well, that's a, there's a, maybe some correlation there. Yeah. Um, plus, they obviously, they're visiting the shadowy part of the moon, which they believe has also got frozen ice. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. But 1972 is a long time ago, eh? We, it is. 50 years almost, more. Yeah. Wow. Something for mankind to be proud of. One small step for me. <laughs> that's the one. One giant leap for me and Ken. <laughs> I wonder what the next famous <laughs> saying is going to be. Yeah, probably something like... Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> something very technological. <laughs> yeah. Don't subscri- subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it <Yeah>. is. It's <laughs> going to be very futuristic, eh? Man, it would be like a, a commercial or something. It's like Nike, just do it. You know, yeah. something like that is going to happen. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. And on that note, is it time to end? It's it's that time again, indeed. Kane, thank you so much. Um, and I hope you're going to have a, a nice weekend and enjoy playing with those uh, very cool glasses of yours, man. Thank you very much. And Thanks for bringing them. Yeah, next time we'll uh, we'll take a deep dive into what are some of the cool things that I've managed to do with them. See yes. If it's worth your time getting them yeah, into Yeah, try SA. getting into a fight, you know, at least one, so we can watch the footage. So you can see the UFC-style point of view. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much to all of our listeners for listening, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Cheers, Kane. Bye bye. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye.